The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon, everyone. This is Veronica Posada with Physician Partners. And thank you very much for participating in today's webinar hosted by Trinet on the benefits uh, from PEOs. Our presenter today is Brett Wilbur. He is Director of Sales with Trinet. Uh, Brett is based in San Leonardo, California, and he joined Trinet in 2003, having spent time working in the startup community as well as working at Insperity and ADECO. Uh, interest in human resources, including outsourcing, cultural building, and recruiting. Currently researching trends in recruiting and talent evaluation in the corporate world. We welcome Brett uh, for presenting today's webinar, and I'd like to hand it over to Brett. Um, I apologize. One quick um, announcement to our attendees is everyone is muted, and um, if you are, if you have a question that you'd like uh, to ask, there's a side panel uh, where you can include your questions. Just please type them in, and we will make sure that we answer all questions at the end of the presentation. Thank you, Brett. You may. Handing it over to you. Thank you, and uh, thank you to Physician Partners for uh, for inviting me to speak today. I do appreciate it. I'm really excited to talk about uh, how PEOs can benefit small business. It's a passion of mine and one that I've had for quite some time. I'm looking forward to talking about really these four areas. One is, you know, how are companies handling HR today? How are medical practices handling HR, what, what are they doing today, what are some of the options that companies are, are choosing in terms of how they address the HR function. Then I'm going to get into the details around PEO and co-employment, what are the advantages of using a PEO, and then I'm going to arm you with some questions on what kinds of things you need to ask when you're part of, um, when you're doing an evaluation process, because be completely frank with you, that is really the key. And we're going to hit that at the end, which is the key questions you have to ask to make sure you're getting the right partner to work with. So let's begin. You know, there are really four basic options for handling HR. And the first one is that you're delegating it to current staff. And I see this a lot. I'll go talk to a practice and they have someone who is handling maybe the office manager is handling it, an operations person is handling it and they've got maybe a couple of the partners who handle a slice of HR. And of course the advantage is it's very inexpensive, it's sort of built into your current cost structure and overhead. Uh, you know, and the disadvantages are also obvious, which is it distracts, and I think of course there's limited expertise, but I think the bigger issue is that it distracts from the core responsibilities of the administrative professionals in your business. You know, we're, there's a lot of key issues that have to be addressed, and this first option, which is quite common I think, causes problems within many businesses I talk to because they've got people who are distracted by issues that are very episodic. You've got you know, a few times a year where HR can be very demanding and then the rest of the time it's less so. And that oftentimes doesn't coincide well with other issues in the business. So that's number one. The section option is that uh, an organization will hire additional administrative staff. Now I actually don't see this a lot in uh, the healthcare practices I work with. And the reason being is that in many cases, uh, margins are being compressed or on the other hand, if margins are good, uh, the partners are looking to maintain um, you know, profitability and uh, distribution of the partners. And so adding uh, HR staff or administrative staff is a tough decision to make because it can be expensive. Now, again, the advantage is that you know, it's something that you have full control over. Um, once you hire someone from the outside. So that's, that's another balance, although not something I see a lot of. Third option is that, and this is what I also, this is probably more common than the second choice, is that companies, organizations are hiring multiple vendors to manage the HR process. So they have a payroll company that handles some administrative function, their benefits broker handles some administrative function, and maybe they hire an outside consultant uh, for a few hours uh, a month or a week to, to kind of clean up the details. And this has some advantages in terms of you can go out and get the specific features and benefits, the needs that you have, find the right vendors, get those filled, so that's an advantage. 
The disadvantage, of course, is that it has lacks coordination. The, the, these groups don't necessarily talk to each other at all, and so that can cause some, some substantial issues. And none of these uh, approaches are really built specifically uh, for small business. The fourth option is to use a PEO, or a single vendor solution. And you know, the advantage is it's flexible and scalable. It gives uh, companies access to big company benefits. So uh, you know, a small uh, organization of 20 or 30 people suddenly has access to the same breadth and scope of benefits that a very large group would have. Um, and it also provides a shifting and sharing and liability from the partners and the, administ and the responsibility of, from the administrative professionals over to the PEO, over to the uh, single vendor solution. Now the disadvantage to this is actually quite clear. Um, it's not for every small business. It just isn't. Not every company is a good fit, and I'll go into a little bit about fit. Um, there are systems limitations. Not all PEOs do the same things, and Trinet is not always a great fit. Our competitors are not always a great fit. So it's important that companies do a smart evaluation process to make sure that their practice is a good fit for the PEO they're looking at. And as for lost control, that really comes from the model. And as I get deeper into this, I'll talk about that. But there is a feeling of loss of control when you go into a single vendor solution. Um, that's just sort of a, a, a part of the aspect of going um, with a PEO. And I'll talk about the good and bad around that. So let's talk about definitions. What do we mean when we talk about PEO or professional employer organization? So this is an organization that provides services to small and medium-sized companies, and it's around employment and HR management services. So most PEOs provide support around HR. They always provide payroll. They almost always provide workers' compensation and benefits programs, health insurance, dental, vision, life insurance, really a full package of benefits. So almost all PEOs provide all those things. And then many PEOs provide a technology platform that wraps that together in sort of an administrative shell that makes all those things integrated in a single, in a, in a streamlined single vendor solution. So uh, that's one of the definitions I have. In a modern PEO, there should be a technology solution that wraps all those pieces together. If there isn't, it's maybe uh, not a good fit for a white collar business. Now, the model itself, PEOs all use a framework called co-employment. And what co-employment does is it defines really two different entities. It defines a worksite employer, that would be you, and an administrative employer, and that would be the PEO. And the administrative employer is, things, is responsible for things like tax compliance and filing employee taxes on behalf of our client, uh, providing benefits programs and sponsoring those benefits programs, sponsoring the flexible spending account, sponsoring the workers' compensation plan, and providing advice around HR. Now, the worksite employer is responsible for things like safety in the workplace, who is hired in the organization, who's terminated, who leaves the organization, how much people get paid, so really everything that's happening at the work site remains responsibility of the work site employer and the administrative employer is responsible for the sponsor of benefits programs and handling tax filings. So it's a really logical split between really an administrative function and the work site function. And it's a really great way for companies to offload a lot of administrative details that can bog them down. And so it's a really, it's a great model. It's been used over the last 25 years, and it's been very uh, well supported um, that this is something that in general can be very helpful in terms of both streamlining companies and helping them control their costs. So that's co-employment. Now, when you visualize it, again, you've got this three-way um, relationship. You've got the PEO, in this example, Trinet, that really could be any PEO, uh, the client, which would be you, and then the employee. So the employee has looks at the PEO, really is the person who provides the benefits programs and their, and their payroll, their paycheck. The client relationship is actually much more sophisticated because we're providing a lot of advice, we're providing a lot of guidance, we're providing a technology platform, 
uh, the, our clients know that we're working on their behalf to help them control their benefits costs. So the relationship between Trinet and the client is different than Trinet and the employee. The employee really sees this in a very administrative sense. This is where the benefits are coming from. That when I've got questions around my paycheck, I call the PEO. So that's the breakdown in that. So what are the advantages of using a PEO? So the first thing that's huge is, is the fact that it's flexible and scalable. Now, when I talk to you know, healthcare related practices, medical practices, I don't typically see the hyper growth that I see in the technology companies I work with. But there is a difference that's really critical around this flexible and scalable. It's that when we talk about flexible, even though there may not be hyper growth, there can be hyper change. Now, I'm seeing that a lot in the business right now. I'll give you three quick examples. I was talking to a company last week that was acquiring other medical practices. So they were looking at using a PEO to act as a platform so they could quickly scale up and hire and, and, and acquire new medical practices and fold them into their own practice. And they really couldn't do that without having a PEO in place because they didn't have the administrative staff to handle it. Um, that's an example. Another example was we had a company – uh, that had just secured a very large contract with a huge healthcare provider. Um, that healthcare provider was going to be funneling business to them for, in their specialty. They had to be prepared to double in size. They're going from a relatively uh, small group of 15 to doubling to 30. And that's a pretty big deal just in 2015. So they saw that as a requirement to start looking at a PEO. Um, and again, you know, we're talking to uh, firms that are 10 employees and you know 200 employees so it really depends on you know what the challenges in the business are and that what what would make sense to why a company would go with uh, a peo second thing is big company benefits it's a huge advantage in our model if one thing if you could just picture the co-employment relationship what it allows when a company uh like Trinet or another PEO aggregates companies together under one buying umbrella, it provides a huge advantage when it comes to going out and buying health insurance. Uh, just for one example, uh, when we go out to our carriers, we're going out as a very large group, not as individual small companies. So you can imagine from an economy to scale standpoint, we have an advantage there. We also have a pretty big advantage from an administrative standpoint because we're giving our partners, uh, the, the health insurance companies, uh, these groups in bite-sized pieces that they want to eat, i.e. big bites, not tiny bites. So it's, there's an administrative advantage and there's an advantage around just having a large uh, scale buying power. So administrative and buying power. And what does this mean? Uh, typically, for, uh, typically, PEOs should be able to provide uh, a great 401k option. They should be able to provide great health insurance benefits. There should be a broad variety of choices and they should be coming at a very competitive cost. So that um, is a great start. And in addition to that, you get voluntary benefits. You know, there's access to life insurance products and, and disability insurance products and a broad variety of other ancillary benefits. And again, you're not in the business of having to manage that. That's something that the PEO will handle on your behalf. So you don't have to manage those individual programs. So access to HR expertise. Um, PEOs will have top-tier uh, HR support. The ones that you, you work with should have that, and that's something that you would want to make sure in the, in the uh, vetting process of your partner. Um, if you just look at it this way, PEOs are in the business of providing HR support. We do it for hundreds of companies, or in the, in the case of Trinet, thousands of companies at a time, and it gives us a huge advantage in terms of when we hire HR professionals, we can give them world-class challenges to solve. And Small companies typically can't provide that to an HR director when they come in. A small company can't go to an HR director and say, we will give you on a weekly basis really interesting and difficult HR challenges, and we're going to support and reward you for solving those challenges. Um, that's something that they can get when they go to a PEO. So it, when you go and ask your PEO for advice around a, a really challenging HR issue, you can feel very confident that you're going to get really good information because you're going to be dealing with really strong professionals. So the last uh, advantage I want to cover is the shifting and sharing of liability. There's been a dramatic change in the 
uh, a number and the breadth and depth of, of responsibilities that companies have to comply with. If you look at this uh, back from the 1980s even to the present day, there's been a dramatic increase in the, uh, the liability issues that face companies today. And using a PEO can help reduce and shift that liability from you and your partners to your, to your uh, PEO. And it's something that is inherent in the co-employment structure. Every contract is different. You should read the contract of the PEOs that you're evaluating, but you'll see within those contracts, all the contracts, a shifting in liability from you to the PEO, specifically around HR liability and responsibility for things like tax filings. So uh, that's something that I feel really strongly about. Uh, take a look at the contracts. It could be very favorable. Now, there are some disadvantages to using a PEO, um, and there can be wrong reasons to select a PEO. So the first thing is you want to look at PEOs really as a long-term strategy. It's not an efficient thing to do to change them every year. It's just not something that will turn out terribly well because it is um, an important decision. You want to make the right partner decision, and what you don't want to do is have to train your employees on different systems each year. There could be huge uh, administrative advantages in going with a PEO that are learned uh, as you get to, to work with that PEO. You can get a very streamlined business, but of course that advantage goes away if you're changing PEOs on a frequent basis. Um, second thing is there can be systems limitations. I mean, Trinet is a great PEO. I've enjoyed working for the company for 11 plus years it is not the right PEO for all companies. And our competitors are not the right PEO for all companies. So you really want to make sure that you're working with the right partner. And uh, some employers fear a loss of control. Let me give you just a very quick example. Um, Trinet buys benefits on behalf of 9,000 customers across the United States. And we make decisions based on what's best for that base of 9,000 companies. So when we're going in and deciding, you know, do we add a new dental carrier or do we want to increase the number of plans offered by Blue Shield, for instance, in California, we're making that decision with a framework of 9,000 companies. Your company might say, hey, we want a, a, a $6,000 deductible, high deductible plan. And that's not something that Trinet offers. So we, have, we offer 12 different plan designs in California from very rich PPO plans to uh, very cost-effective, low-cost PPO plans. But again, we're deciding on behalf of 9,000 companies what is, what's the right product offering for them. So I think if that's, again, you know, it's, it's a difference in control. I have companies I've talked to who said, hey, look, we want a very specific, super customized 401k plan, a super specific plan around benefits, and can you meet that? Can you customize your platform? because uh, we'd sure like to go with Trinet. My answer is, you know, we can't customize our benefits platform uh, for any one customer. So again, that is a disadvantage of using a PEO, true of Trinet and uh, all of our competitors. So let's get down to due diligence when selecting a PEO. This is something that is really critical. Um, and fortunately, you have the internet and you can find out if you're dealing with a stable and legitimate PEO. I would go and first look at NAPEO, which is our National Association of PEOs. And that's going to give you a listing of all the registered PEOs that are part of this governing organization. And it's a really good place to start. So that's the first thing I would look at. Second thing is, and this is more me, just because I've been in this business a while, I would look at the track record of the PEO. How long have they been around? This is a really difficult business, just like you run a really difficult business. And you're going to want to see a company that's been in business for multiple, multiple years. Um, I would look at, you know, certainly at least 10 years, um, you know, minimum of five. I, uh, and that's really almost too short. This is a business that's really difficult to, to run effectively. And companies that have been around a long time, you can rest assured, must be good at their business. Because you can picture we're taking on an enormous amount of complexity and challenge from every one of our clients. So you have to be good at this to stay in business for a long time. Uh, you're going to want to challenge the PEO and ask them specifically how they handle specific issues. So, for instance, I would ask them, um, you know, 
let me give you a scenario. I have an employee relations issue between two employees. How would you help me mitigate that risk for my, for my firm? Walk me through step by step how if I have a conflict between uh, one of my employees or one of my employees uh, files a leave of absence that I don't, that uh, may not, uh, that, that may not be covered by federal law, how would you recommend that we handle it? So I would test them a little bit, see what their HR chops are, see how they answer these questions. The third thing is really you need to understand how you're being charged. Now, it sounds like it should be kind of obvious, but it's not. It actually varies PEO to PEO. Uh, some PEOs charge on a per employee per month basis and then they add in the cost of benefits and workers' comp. Other companies charge on a blended rate. So they're saying for all your employees and all the different salaries and all the different plans, we're going to charge you this percentage. And that is a, a different way of doing it. In one way, it's simple. You're just paying a percentage markup over payroll. On the other hand, it's hard to see exactly what you're paying. So what I would ask for every time and what I recommend to my friends who are looking at this is that they demand a breakout of specifically what each portion, component of the, of the fees and services will be. I'd want to be able to see on a uh, one-page example how I'm being charged for each employee. Is it on a broken-out basis or is it on a blended basis? And if it's blended, I would want to see it broken out. That's my, uh, that's my strongly held opinion on that. You're at number four is you're going to look for better benefits. Every PEO that you talk to probably will have a broader line of benefits than you're offering today. They should be better. There should be more choices, and you will find in many cases uh, it's a very cost-effective way of buying benefits. So if you're not seeing better benefits, that would be uh, surprising, and you might want to look at a different PEO. Occasionally, I run into companies that just have great benefits in place, and uh, that, you know, that would be the exception. Probably less than you know, 5% of the time um, are the benefits I see at a company really comparable to a PEO's. The other thing I would do is verify that the risk pool matches uh, your profile. So what does that mean? You're going to want to make sure the PEO you're working with works with companies like yours. Ask for references. Uh, ask for uh, what the average wage is. Um, does it match in line with what you're doing? Because uh, the kind of services that are offered to uh, you know, a, a company with an average wage of 35K is going to be different than a company with the average wage of 135K. And there are PEOs that serve both of those groups very well. But typically not the same PEO will serve both of those groups very well. Uh, you know, you're going to want to make sure the service provider meets all state regulatory requirements. And again, that's part of NAPIO. You can go look that up. Um, someone who is not able to meet those requirements would not be a member of NAPIO. And the last one, seven, is kind of interesting. How long does it take to transition? One thing I would ask uh, a company to do is provide a transition document. What's going to happen step by step if I move my practice from its current state to your PEO? Can you show me a document that outlines step by step, week by week, well, day by day, what are the activities that have to happen so we run payroll on the uh, 15th of March? And showing that they have that documentation uh, means they typically have a pretty buttoned up process. And uh, it's not rocket science to bring a company on board a PEO, not at all. It's typically a fairly straightforward process. But I like to see a really well thought out transition plan. And most good PEOs will have that documentation available to you for you to review. So you can really understand what steps are going to be taking place and how long they're going to take. So I'd like to leave it there and answer any questions you have, um, and I'll look forward to getting those questions. Thank you. Brett, thanks so much for the presentation. That was uh, very in-depth and, <clears throat> and detailed on the, uh, the benefits of the PEO offering. Um, Veronica, are you uh, are you on here? Yeah, I, I was talking and realized I was on mute. I apologize. <laughs> Thank you so much, Brett, for your uh, presentation. And uh, this would be a good time for anyone to ask questions. If you would please type your questions in. Um, at this moment, I don't see any questions typed in on the side panel. Um, but uh, Brett is available for questions if anybody has 
has them. Uh, let's see. I'll give it another minute. Uh, no questions have come through. But that was a great presentation, Brett. And um, if, if no one types in questions um, here to us now, uh, if any questions come my way, I definitely will refer them to you, Brett. In fact, if you can bring up um, maybe your, your phone number and email page. Uh, did we have a, um, a slide with that information? Um, I actually don't have that okay. slide as part of this. So I'll have you, uh, if you would, um, please just follow up with. Um, yeah, they can just follow up with, with me. And um, everyone will also get a copy of the presentation. And um, you can use that um, information in, in the email to contact myself, Veronica, here at Physician Partners. And we'd be happy to get uh, any additional uh, answers to your questions. So at this time,